Welcome to Pro Practice, your guide to refine, enliven, and illuminate the piano repertoire. I'm Josh Wright, and today's episode is on the Chopin Nocturne in G minor, Opus 37, number one. Just I'll just play a little here so you can remember it if you've heard it before, and if you haven't, it's it's one of my favorite nocturnes. Today we're going to go over specific techniques on how to get better at voicing, uh, certain stylistic elements within the piece, and how to vary the shapes. If you look through this piece, um, this figure comes back over and over and over again without that much variation. Of course, in Chopin's, uh, you know, trademark style, I guess you could say, he does a lot of ornamentations uh, different time to time, but even then, he repeats some of them as it comes back in the recap. And there's a beautiful chorale section in the middle that can get a little boring if we're not careful. So my goal for today is if any of you have been considering playing this piece, I would urge you to do so. It's a great introduction to the Nocturnes, I think. It is pretty tough. Schumann was uh, noted for saying that this is kind of a stripped down version of the Opus 27 Nocturnes. He said it's much more simple and elegant in many ways. And so uh, you still get that beautiful Chopin harmony and the singing melodic lines while you know, kind of avoiding some of the rhythmic complexities of some of his other nocturnes. So let's go ahead and get started. I was recently doing a lesson um, with a wonderful teacher at Peabody, and he was talking about kind of this uh, golden touch almost. And um, he said that, I, you know, a lot of times we, we get into this whole like stroking type approach to the piano. He said, you know, Josh, a lot of times it's just right here. You don't have to do anything fancy. You can create harsh sounds by, by hitting the keys too hard or by smacking down into the bottom of the key too hard so you get that sound. But he said, you know, a lot of times it's just right here and you're trying too hard. And so I applied that and it, the piece became a million times easier. So let's just try right hand here. Just, just relax your arm weight into the key. <clears throat> your hand stays structured but it just transfers the weight effortlessly. Another image that I really have found um, for myself extremely beneficial, and actually for a lot of my students as well, the key dip on the piano is really only like, I don't know, maybe a half an inch, quarter of an inch, somewhere in there. If you imagine blowing up that key dip, and then this is something I just put in uh, on my own. Imagine filling it up with water, and then when you dip down into the key, it's like you're dipping down deep within the key, but not smacking the bottom, but also not being too shallow. And that water will kind of help you to plunge in there without like being too forceful. I, th I think just that image really helps. And I've actually told that to quite a few of my private students on Skype and uh, in person, and it's actually worked quite well for all of them, advanced or beginners. So just think of that, and you won't get any of these harsh sounds. For me, one, two, four, two works best for that. I've tried out all sorts of things like one, two, four, three. That works. But for some reason, and I don't like one, two, three, two. For some reason, it feels a little more accented in my hands. The softness of the four makes that turnaround really nice. Okay. Again, we're, we're searching for a deep sound, but nothing harsh. take a look at the left hand, then we'll put them hands together. One thing that my teacher at Michigan and I went over that was brilliant, uh, he said, you know, think of this. A 
and shape that. It's, it's such a haunting, beautiful line. And so you want to feature it a little bit. Again, a lot of times, what I was doing is I was just kind of throwing it under the rug there, just as soft as I could, and then the right hand was singing. But if you actually support it a little bit with the left hand and with shape, you will sound so good. I remember one of the most influential performances I've ever seen was by this brilliant young pianist named Claire Wangsi at the National Chopin Competition that I competed in, which she won. And I remember thinking, my wife and I were sitting there, my wife's a wonderful musician as well and has her doctorate in piano, and we both looked at each other after the performance and I said, I was thinking this in my mind, and I said, what was the best thing that you thought about her playing? And she said exactly what I was thinking. She's like, her left hand shaping was amazing. So you don't want to overshape it. You still want it to be absolutely secondary to the melody. But if you can do a little something with the left hand, go for it. Okay, let's give that a try. And you could take a more extreme approach, a little louder. You could do soft to start. to start with, and then die away. That's the one I like and the one I use because that allows me to cadence very softly on this G minor. Just go very not you don't I don't want you to play shallow, but I want you to play sentimentally right here. Make sure you're holding your tie, uh, your your half notes right there, if you can reach that, because if you just let that go, you don't have that the C making the D seven harmony. The other thing that we want to think about right there is that this. Is that reminiscent of this style since we haven't heard the chorale yet this chorale this little bit of a chorale is foreshadowing what's coming up next okay let's go ahead and move on thank you so much for watching as with all pro practice videos, the first section is free. If you'd like to view the rest of this video, or if you'd like to learn more about pro practice, just click on the link on this screen or on the link in the comments section below. Also, if you could like this video, share it, or leave a comment below so it can be shared with as many people as possible, I would truly appreciate it. Thank you so much for your support of pro practice.